Hello, welcome. This is The Big Fight. Now, these have been a disturbing fortnight, a disturbing few days for the judiciary and for the concept of institutions in general. Of course, the sight of four senior judges of the Supreme Court, which we saw last week, coming out challenging the Chief Justice, efforts that have been made since then to try and bridge the gap, all of those are disturbing. But behind it all is a broader question that is coming to the fore, and that is what we're going to be discussing on The Big Fight right now. It has been said that institutions over a period of time have been coming under threat. You will recall we discussed this just a couple of weeks back. There's a certain view that says there are many pillars in a democracy. Those pillars support each other and become the edifice and the framework that holds up and supports democracy. There's the legislature, there's the executive, there's the media, there's the judiciary and many other institutions. There is a view which is being expressed that in India, as in other parts of the world, institution after institution is the independence is coming under some sort of question it's being said about various agencies of state power it's being said about the media right now it's being you're hearing charges being made about a body that was above everything like the election commission you've been hearing it certainly in the last couple of days after the drama that we have seen this week so with all of that the judiciary was held to being above it all and now Questions are being asked there as well that is everything completely okay with the judiciary? We knew that there were problems with the judiciary. We knew that the process of law sometimes took, took a long time. Justice delayed. Some people said there's no justice and that was happening often enough. Now broader questions have been asked about a more institutional level. So we're going to turn our attention to this. Is there something more fundamentally wrong with the judiciary right now? Is this just uh, a blip that is going to go away and should we use what is happening right now and the recent scrutiny on the judiciary to try and push for a greater amount of reforms and change and if so what what should those be so thank you all so much for joining us i'm going to start by welcoming all the the really great guests we have with us vikas singh senior advocate of the supreme court also president of the supreme court bar association anjali bhadwaj is the member of the executive committee for campaign for judicial accountability uh, you know, one of the great people to talk about this, Aman Lekhi, senior advocate of the Supreme Court, Katie Tulsi, another senior advocate of the Supreme Court. Sabah Nakvi is going to be talking to us about other institutions that may be coming under threat, including journalists, but you know, who knows which way <laughs> that is headed. And uh, Gopal Sankar Narayan, an advocate of the Supreme Court, thank you so much for being with us. Thanks. You know, before we dive into uh, the specifics of what has been happening right now, I just wanted to ask each of you your, your overall sense. The fact that the judiciary is an independent pillar of democracy whose independence, whose ability to stand above the fray is unquestioned, and it has been unquestioned till now. Do you think that it's coming under threat, or is that too strong a phrase to make? Well, this particular incident has definitely shaken the people, and they have started feeling that there's something very amiss, which is not good for the, for the institution, because that's been the last resort, and people have been really depending upon the judiciary and especially the Supreme Court and people have a lot of faith. So this has really shaken that faith uh, to quite an extent. And I'm sure it- Do you think that's a, happened? you think that faith yes, has Yes, I think it has, it has definitely happened. The common man is definitely feeling that even the judiciary is also have something wrongdoing is there as well, which was not so till this incident had happened. So I, I really feel that it'll take some time to repair this uh, dent. But we are in the process, I'm sure we'll be able to uh, come okay, out. Okay, so it. to look at the broader, and somebody, I'm just going to get you to help us you know, understand the broader you know, sway of what is happening. Of the various institutions that I was talking about, people are already saying that, look, the various they are agencies of the government, and those people have been saying, you know, the ED, CBI, Income Tax Department, all of those, there's been a question mark around them. The press was supposed to be above it all. The independence and the flexibility and the freedom of the press is, and whether the press is acting on behalf of one agency or the other agency or one party or the other party, that's uh, coming into question. After what's happened, certainly after this week, and Aam Party and all of that stuff, election commission, whether we like it or not, is being questioned. Do you think there is an overall erosion of faith in institutions that we are seeing? I think so. And uh, one could also argue that indeed they're reflecting uh, what the, those who are in power, they're reflecting their point of view and not listening to others. But that's not the point. As far as the media is concerned, all investigations, uh, everything has more or less stalled. The, you sort of, the dominant tone is to provide alibis and excuses for anything that go, goes wrong, though not in all the newspapers. About this incident, as a non-legal person, 
the way I understood it about what has happened in the judiciary, I had to read that letter four times to even begin to understand what was written by the four judges. But let me say what, this, what they basically said, that democracy is in danger. So what did it mean? I took the trouble to try and understand that. Clearly, electoral <laughs> democracy is not going to stop any day soon. So what did they mean by democracy being in danger? They meant that the distance between the judiciary and those who are in political power is, could be seriously compromised by, I just want to finish this point, Vikram, because it's important, by, select, by benches sitting on, vari, uh, on various decisions. Now, why should that be important? It look, appears to be a very complicated thing. Why should a few judges deciding on a few cases be important? It is important because when I asked around and I got into the issue, one learned that even the constitution, the basic structure can be changed if all the judges could be handpicked by the political class. Yeah, but so you, you, I mean, you would have to go you know, far. I mean, that, no, that's. No, but it can happen. Hang on, hang on. You have to vigilant. overturn yeah. Keshavan and Dharti. Yeah, you have yeah, to get a lot yeah. of things happening before but that. But that was, a, if I'm not mistaken, six, seven judgments. Thirteen. 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 Okay. Thirteen. 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 It is sad almost that, that, that that's again being called. For the last decade and a half, nobody has ever pointing fingers. This week, you've seen all the trauma that has happened now, and especially now with the disqualification of, uh, or the potential disqualification of the Aam Aadmi Party right. in Malays. You know, that's that question is going to yeah, come yeah, up for the election commission also. Uh, no, no, I agree with you. And it's, uh, look, I mean, as far as the EC is con uh, considered, uh, EC goes, I even remember when uh, that uh, when Lalu used to ac accuse that the PM station. station. <laughs> even okay. then he said it was fake. But it's not the same thing. But yeah, but nobody has really pointed a finger. Mm -hmm. Anjali, so, you know, is the judiciary, and, and I think the point that I'm trying to make is that it seems to be a series of dominoes that seem to be toppling over. You would have once upon a time found it difficult to believe that many of the independent pillars of, the, of democracy are in some way or the other seen as being tottering a little bit. Is the judiciary the last person standing right now? Well, let me uh, address the questions that you've been raising at a broader level, Vikram. We have been saying for the longest time, various campaigns in the country have been saying for the longest time, parties come, parties go, governments come, governments go. In a democracy, it's the institutions, the independent institutions that really determine the strength of a democracy right. and whether the rights of the common people are finally going to be uh, protected or not. I, I really do believe that over successive regimes, and we are seeing it perhaps at its peak at the moment, there has been a huge blow to the independence of various institutions. Whether we look at anti-corruption institutions, we look at grievance redress institutions, we look at the judiciary, we look at election commission, there have been huge questions that have been raised. Just even this government came to power on the plank of anti-corruption, the Lokpal institution which people fought for so that corruption could be fought against, that institution has been, hasn't been set up. Institutions that would guarantee transparency in the functioning of the government are seen to be weakened at the moment. And I think that there have been very, very serious issues that the four judges have come out and raised these are issues that cannot the country cannot afford to sweep under the carpet, and these are issues which which point to a very much larger melee. The very fact in that the those. So I'm going to come back to the charges and come back to the specific case in a, in, a, in a little while because even that, in a sense, was has been politicized over the last seven eight days, right? So we don't know where that is headed. Uh, Aman and and K, this is let me just get both. Are you are you agreeing with the broad sense of a certain amount of despair about the independence of institutions right now? Or no, is I, that a bit I, I, okay. I don't share the gloom at all. I, I personally feel that uh, these issues arise in any democracy. There can be differences of opinion, there can be problems, and merely because there are problems doesn't mean there should be despair. Now, as long as we have the capacity to address the problem, then deal with them and find a solution, every problem can eventually be cathartic. So, in so far as this issue is concerned, uh, I, I don't share the pessimism which is generally being expressed over okay, here. So and let that me ask part, you, do you think, so let me ask you that, do you, would you say, let, let me just, I, before I come to the judiciary, of some of the other institutions that have been spoken about, whether it is agencies of the government, uh, agencies linked to the government, whether it's IT, CBI, enforcement director, all of that, do you think they're functioning entirely independently? No, in so or far the as election commission or, you know, the media? 
No, is it so functioning as, as a there have been instances, show? individual instances where the conduct can be found to be questionable. But in so far as the polity is concerned, you can't possibly have every situation where everyone is perfect because you are not in a utopia. Yes, but the question is, when there is a wrong, there is a requirement of it being addressed. You raise the issue in any case and there is someone to account. And eventually there is the judiciary and this is where I think this is important. Yeah. You cannot bring the judiciary at par with any other institutions and because you are talking of the others, raise the judiciary to that so, level. I, I that's reduce, 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 it, reduce it to that level. That's absolutely no. So you put your finger on it. The reason I'm calm, the reason I'm, do, I'm I'm asking all of these questions is to build it up to it. If other institutions are not fully functioning, as Anjali is saying, are not completely fu you know, functioning in the manner that ideally they should, mm -hmm. the judiciary becomes the institution of last resort. Absolutely. The judiciary is the final hope for everybody. Absolutely. Which is why a well-functioning judiciary performing its job is absolutely imperative. Yeah. It is, the, it is the cornerstone of, of democracy. To and which is the reason why this affirmative extrajudicial activism, which is, uh, which is how I'll describe in so far as what uh, the learned judges, four judges said, is something which is dangerous. Why? Because judiciary is by its nature, it is counter-majoritarian. Now it's counter-majoritarian because in so far as decisions that are concerned, decisions are reasoned decisions, notwithstanding any transient majority. That is, it is not in any way conforming to majoritarianism. Now in so far as the judges are concerned, by referring the matter to the people and making the people decide, we are regressing into what can very well turn into an okay. uh, You know, that's such a fascinating point that you've raised and I want to come back to it to, uh, to some extent because you could argue with it both ways. Okay, yes, Tulsi, let me get you in on this. He says, and he's absolutely right in saying this, the reason why the uh, independent, free, well-functioning judiciary is so crucial is it can protect the rights and the privileges of a single individual even if the rest of the country believes in something uh, something wrong, if that rights of a single individual is being trampled upon, that's where the judiciary can come in. It is not dependent on majoritarianism. The subtext of what at least these four judges seem to be saying is that maybe that is starting to come in. Maybe the, gun, the government and others in power are starting to influence decision making by constituting benches, which would therefore go against that spirit. You see, I, I personally think that transparency is like sunlight. And for every institution, it's a good thing. We can't say that for every other public institution, transparency is good, and for judiciary, it's bad. I'm so glad that for the first time, they are practicing what they preached. It is, it's a good thing to, to go to the people. After all, it's people's court. Supreme Court doesn't exist for judges. It doesn't exist for lawyers. <coughs> it exists for the people. And if there is a problem with it, they, they should go to the people, and it's like sun rays. Sun rays are the best, mo best disinfectant. Okay. And I, and I think uh, 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 shine the sun and allow no, that to uh, be a disinfectant. See, it, it, that is stating the obvious. Question is, uh, what kind of disinfectant do we need? Because uh, insofar as you use a disinfectant, wrong time, you use the wrong disinfectant, that can be counterproductive. So the question is not disinfectant. The question here is, as far as judges are concerned, they have a unique role. And I personally feel the problem here is the moral panic. And moral panic is normally associated with urban legends and moral entrepreneurs. Now the way in which this thing has unfolded with details not forthcoming and opinions being presented through the letter in which unless you assume that one side is right and the other is wrong, we can't actually reach a conclusion, we are actually reducing judges also into moral entrepreneurs. And because when you reduce them to moral entrepreneurs, the very sanctity of the institution is to that extent is affected. Okay. Gopal, which, which, which side of the fence are you on? This I'm, I'm somewhere in the middle and I'll explain why. I think there are lots of presumptions in this uh, entire instance which may be erroneous. The first is in looking at it in binaries, saying are you with four judges, are you with the chief justice, who is wrong, who is right. I think that's a problem which is prevailing in our society where we look at everything in binaries. This is actually extremely complex. To believe that the judiciary is five judges at the top or the Supreme Court alone is a grave error. To point fingers and say that the judiciary is in a crisis now presumes that you're ignoring the other 3,000 odd judges we have across the country who are dispensing justice as important for clients across the country as it is for somebody who has a case before the Supreme Court. I think it's also extremely erroneous to believe. If I can like, just pause yeah. you there, if I can just pause you there, yes. there are questions around that. I mean, we are coming to the sort of reforms that are yes. required. Yes. Even the manner in which justice is being dispensed yes. is um, is something that has been a subject of discussion. Absolutely. We've had three that doesn't make fights in it. Well. Delayed justice, too yes. many under trials. Absolutely. 
that's, that's data after day. Correct. All of those Correct. are questions Correct. that we need to look at. Correct. But I had an additional point, which is this, that to believe that this simmering discontent in the judiciary is a recent event, I think is where the error lies. Just as with any other group of people in any other walk of life, judges have had dis differences for years, especially after the collegium system came in. We have found many instances of judges who are deserving, who are good, who never made it up to the Supreme Court or made it to the top seat. Right. So we've had this problem for a while where there has been discontent among judges. There have been differences. The only difference here is that it came out in public and it's become a matter of public discourse for yeah, me yeah, my my so, yeah i mean yes and no, yes that that is that is what you said is substantially yes. correct but sabad there's one other point and i just want yeah. to throw it to to all yeah. of you in, in, in turn one other point has come out out here yes and in a sense two charges which are which are there at the uh, behind all of this yeah. both of which are far more serious than the chief justice is not entirely doing uh, doing his job mm -hmm. or we're disagreeing with the way xyz mm -hmm. is happening those are fine at the behind this uh, if you look at it, Sabha, are, are two things. One, that benches are being deliberately constituted, Con in a sense, to help the government in yeah. power, which would be a substantial erosion of the independence, independence. of the judiciary, if that is correct. Yeah. Even more seriously, there is almost uh, a questioning in the entire justice lawyer in incidents, mm. the possibility that you could have a judge who was actually killed mm. to influence a particular case and somebody else comes 15 days later and passes a verdict yeah. in this. Now that of course is a charge which is just out there in out the there. open, it's not been established or proven, but behind and it are two very thing. serious charges which yes. are beyond yeah. anything which has happened yeah. to so be Before Sabha responds, I just want to say one thing, that if you look carefully at the letter, and I think many people have missed this, the bottom of page 3, the top of page 4, says chief justices yeah. it doesn't talk about just one man it says that there has been a trend among chief justices of having do of doing this yes there is an ad hoc power which is vested with the chief justice and a course correction is being sought now as far as justice lawyer is concerned i think the problem is why should this have come as a case to the supreme court at all the supreme court being the parents patria as it were for all the judges across the country the minute an incident like this happened the minute it came in the press should have said so motu we are taking responsibility we are ordering an inquiry even now i believe that should have been done at the earliest and the supreme court the entire judiciary has abdicated its duty towards that poor unfortunate man so, so let me uh, let me throw both of those things hmm. to you is it at all possible that, I mean, so underlying all of this the possibility that judgments or benches can be constituted to help one or other political party possibility a, and the possibility that a judge could actually be murdered mm. to prevent him from passing a verdict uh, now, is that uh, what is causing so, many, so much okay. concern I didn't say this uh, I'm, I'm not saying anything it was the four judges of the Supreme Court who raised the possibility but on the lawyer matter I'll just say this beyond the judicial part of it the problem with the lawyer matter is this that we have had so much of hype and uh, uh, people getting there and uh, if you look at the facts which are brought out in a story it deserves an investigation but <coughs> unfortunately that has been made presented in the media as the central point of the judges presser in large sections of the media have done that whereas if you look from the stories which have been written about it that evidence is unlikely to stand any any kind yeah. of criminal uh, scrutiny unless you, unless there's an inquiry and more evidence comes out the whole thing has become a trial in media the strange death of a judge the only fact we have which is certain about that is that after this judge died the next judge who handled the matter which has the potential to drag on in the life of the president of the Bharatiya Janata Party dispensed with it in his favor very quickly and the CBI then did not appeal against that uh, decision. Which These is also a bit, and within so 15 not, days my eyebrows were raised. I am not a fan of hysteria on lawyer to ignore the other yeah. stuff. You know? And, 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 you are, and you're, look, it's the mm. tendency of the media to hold media yeah. trials on yeah, every yeah, single yeah, issue. Yeah, yeah. This, is, this is something which if at all needs mm. to be looked at, needs to be looked mm. at more substantially. Are there charges, so let me come to the four of you. Are the allegations or the charges or the illusions that are being made as a result of all of this more serious than anything that we've seen before? And is there any basis to them? Well, uh, more serious in the sense that they're coming out. You see, any institution which functions in an opaque manner is more prone to favoritism and, and corruption. Any institution which, which is transparently functioning 
they will will be able to correct the course okay. quickly but so far as loya is concerned i can only say that there needs to be an in depth inquiry as to whether the death is natural or unnatural it's difficult to say murder unless there are more incidents but there are number of important questions which question the theory that is a natural death it may not be a natural death yeah it's i mean as i'm as i'm again saying repeatedly there is no evidence of this one way or the other this is just the illusions and the other charges that have been made which frankly the family has not come out and said there are not five or so. six circumstances we needn't okay. debate know, those just on the gujarat cases in counter cases where there was much more solid evidence have fallen through so let's be practical if this is a political strategy to attack the bjp then loya is not going to make you win any points you you know it's it's anyway i won't argue okay. because i've argued this with is, a lot of people about uh, this this is know? precisely the point and that's the reason why i personally find this uh, letter is will be the cause of a lot of uh, a political debate which would needlessly drag the judiciary into uh, a, a, a very unfortunate state and uh, you talk about the letter the four judges feel there's something seriously wrong taking the allegations broadly it is suggestive of judicial misconduct of the grossest form perhaps warranting impeachment when the judges come out with this particular unconventional way of conveying it to the public and requiring the public de to decide having taken that step and having crossed that threshold it behoved them to be specific now you talking about allusions you are talking about assumptions we are all guessing up what is going to, what is the issue behind it but none of us know what is precisely the issue and i personally think this is where the judges in fact failed their duty because okay. if they actually had to raise the issue they had to raise the issue in a manner so as to make it clearly intelligible so that there could be an understanding as to the gravity of the matter okay. which could be tested objectively which in fact so, this is this is lacking so so anjali and vikas let me just ask you now at a slightly broader level right is it at all possible that some of what is being directly and indirectly stated in this case and what has come out after that and we've been seeing this vicious debate that has been raging now for the last 6 7 days and you know dominating the headlines are those things even possible that so, you could have you know benches being systematically you know manipulated to help a or b political party Vikram, any, now in the past yeah. and because if that is the case and that is something which all of us should worry about i think it's possible i mean there's nothing to preclude its possibility but let me just let me just put it in the larger context i think there has been a general concern and which mr tulsi has also alluded to about the functioning of the judiciary the transparency and the accountability of the judiciary in general what the four judges have come out and put in front of the country i think we can debate the merits and demerits of the way in which in which it was done i personally feel it was an unprecedented step they are saying they tried to take corrective measures they wrote two months ago to the chief justice they met with the chief justice the same morning as they came out they had been trying they failed they came out to say what was wrong what was troubling them and what they felt was wrong with the judiciary the issue that they have raised on benches the allocation of benches is central to the dispensation of justice because if i as a person go to a supreme court and i am not sure that the ben bench that might be listening to my case might be actually fixed to get a particular outcome how can i have faith in the dispensation of justice from that court so i think the issue that they have raised is very grave and in that i i believe that there has to be infusion of greater transparency better systems in the functioning of the judiciary why must there not be a rational a fair and a transparent system of bench allocation after all in the high courts you have a system of a roster which is published why not in the supreme court these are okay. questions that need to be addressed and i think what would be really important for us at this stage this is a crucial stage where judges have taken a step which is unprecedented we must so, make sure that the right kind of fix is put into place so let me just complete my uh, two points first yeah, let me let's get in then i'm going to come to get yeah. you to list some of the points that yes, you think please. might what might might have to be done with that so let's just first finish on to diagnose the problem how bad you know, could it possibly be well as far as the problem is concerned if you decide to have a press conference what do you do you disclose something you don't do a press conference to conceal something 
this press conference actually concealed more and disclosed really nothing. The letter which they wrote, even as a lawyer, I had difficulty in understanding what is in that letter which is of so great significance. It is about talking about the MOP. But the more the they MOP, wrote, the more the damage it would have done to the judiciary. No, the no, they wisely did not. But I then don't the go for a press damage, conference. Yeah. The if you are wanting to do a press a conference, more damage. I don't think there can be a greater damage. Because, because what is, if, if you disclose more, states, then there is and, more damage. I made it the subject Vikram, of light-hearted The problem today is that the people are guessing. Everybody is making his own guess. Somebody is saying lawyer, somebody is saying something else. Somebody is saying a judge can be managed. If a judge can be managed or if a judge is not able to give disjustice or if a judge is going to decide in favor of the government, he is not fit to be a judge of the Supreme Court at all. Right. How did he reach there? The, so, the problem really is far more, far bigger than that. You can't have a system where because every judge in the Supreme Court has equal judicial powers. The Chief Justice also doesn't have any additional judicial powers. Right. He only is the first amongst equal. So there is right. really so, nothing. So hang on. So, so let, me, let me now, look, okay, let's, let's just come to the crux of it. Let's try and find, you know, perhaps whatever else happens, this should be used as an occasion to try and find some of the solutions and the answers that are required for the judiciary, right? And it is, it is about time that we started to figure out how Frankly, a lot of institutions need to be looking inwards, to be introspecting. It's certainly true of the politicians, and they do it. It's certainly true of the media right now. It's probably true yeah. for, the, for the judiciary as well. Can I just say one thing? Let's just look at it, Sabah, if we can, in various individual steps which are required. First, the overall crucial important question of the independence of the judiciary, which to a sense is what is being questioned right now, the independence of the judiciary. Now, if you look at the state, and I'm going to again you know, come in no particular order to you, if you look at the situation even abroad. Can I? Okay. Yeah, Sabah, you want to say something? Yeah, I just want to say, you know, I'm very glad we're talking. We're, we're talking fundamentally when we talk about nobility and purpose, we're talking about the higher judiciary. Let's be very clear. There is all Indians who've dealt with the lower judiciary know there's corruption, know there's fixing. So we let's be very, because let's not present our judiciary as this grand thing, nobility of purpose. We have a great problem. When you start off at the trial court level, cases are fixed. There are judges who will not, there are lawyers associations which will not or, uh, allow certain cases to be tried. They will bash up lawyers who defend certain type of, uh, uh, you know, ch uh, people uh, under trial. So we have a, we don't have a perfect lower judiciary. I just want to say this to the audience sitting out there. Okay. It is this, this particular issue only deals with the higher judiciary. Okay. That's, it's, that's, a, it's, a, it's a valid point. And by the way, would the rest of you agree with that? No, that I, there is I, a problem? No, I, I won't agree with it wholeheartedly or comprehensively in the sense that it's beyond redemption and totally redeemable and so far as the corruption no, is no, concerned. She, she's, saying that. she's saying that there are, the they are broader is, issues the in the lower is, judiciary. The suggestion, is, the suggestion is that any hope of getting anything out of the lower judiciary is a distant dream. No, no, the pipe dream itself. No, no, Mr. number of chief justices who have said there are a number of I'm highlighting the things that we have. We cannot gloss over. There are a number of chief Your justices who have said that 30% of the subordinate judiciary is incorrigibly corrupt <laughs> and 30% is incorrigibly honest and the others are Incompetent. Either here or there, <laughs> both sides. That's a rather. <laughs> this is this is, is what they have said themselves. Is that bad? Uh, so I mean, before I come back to the higher judiciary and the question of independence that I was talking about, yeah. for the lower <laughs> judiciary, this is a rather big picture <laughs> that is being painted. Yeah, well, well, I think uh, the lower and the higher judiciary have had problems. If I if I understand. I, I think what Sabha is saying is this is not just a problem with the higher judiciary. What we are discussing right now and what has been pointed out by the judges perhaps points towards the higher judiciary, but the problem very much exists at the lower judiciary as well. But I think the larger picture over here is that like any institution, any institution in a democracy, one cannot say that there can't be checks and balances in, a, in the judiciary. We have to discuss and decide what are those checks and balances. And we also cannot say so what? that, what is that required people of the country balances? cannot be involved. Because, so let me, let me just start by sure. saying with what the judges brought up, the allocation of benches. The allocation of benches, like I said, needs to be fair, rational, and transparent. Because while we all agree that it's the Chief Justice's role, he's the master of the roster, but discretion cannot be arbitrariness. You cannot say that selective benches are given, and this is not a question of junior judges or higher judges uh, or senior judges at all. This is a question that when a, a matter is allocated, it must be seen to be fairly allocated, rationally allocated, well, and people should.
should be able is there, to... Isn't there... But behind that, isn't there another issue? And because I want to turn to you on that, the, one of the issues is also even the question of allocating of allo the allocation of benches and the fact that that might influence a case or the other almost is presupposing that there will be judges on a particular bench who are more inclined to go in a certain direction than in the others. By the way, it's not a problem that is limited only to India. If you look at the United States, for example, which is often hailed as a place there where, the problem is there is, where, where there's perfect checks and balances, there, because the president is appointing judges, you're having bench after bench in the Supreme Court in America. So you really know which side who will You know exactly which is going to win. This is a conservative language. bench. This is a liberal bench. Party this is a conservative language. majority. But they sit together. Majority. There are no benches. And you know what the outcome is going to be. There are no benches. There are no benches. They, they, are no benches. they all sit together. All yeah, I mean, I mean to say, I mean to say that you... They're unanimous. They're divided by party my, lines. The point I'm trying to make is that because it is divided along conservative and liberal lines, you almost know what the verdict is going to be. I'll tell you, Vikram, as far as the Bar Association is concerned, we made a request to the Chief Justice. Like the Delhi High Court has a system of a roster. A lot of people don't know. The Supreme Court also has a roster, but yes. it's not in the public domain. Absolutely. I've asked him to make it in the public domain. I'm very hopeful probably he'll make it very soon. He'll make it in the so, public domain. So, so how all this, can you, so this, this allegation which Anjali is making, that really is not an allegation in that sense because even though we may not know, clients may not know, lawyers may not know, but the registry knows no. that which matter is to go to where. Absolutely. It's so, not as if it's a, a complete arbitrariness in, so in the allocation of matters. How do you stop arbitrariness? If people don't know, people, because you can't have <laughs> justice which is just done, it also what, has to be seen what, to be done. What role? And in but order to maintain the credibility of any institution, one cannot say that one will be complete. We know what happens when institutions function behind, behind a veil of secrecy. Again, that issue which has been brought in in the letter that the four justices put out, the MOP issue, why is there no transparency in the appointment of judges? Where so I was coming MOP, to that, you see they appointed the, the judges, again, come back to the American example there, it's very clearly the president is appointing a Supreme Court judge, which is why it sometimes has such but a major impact. By the Senate but committee. In this, is it part of the problem that you, in India you almost, we have grown up to believe that the judges or the Supreme Court or anywhere else should really be above all party politics, that's the whole point of it. But in this case, they are almost direct, uh, in this case or any other case, they are, they are, uh, 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 that is where the biggest question on the independence of the judiciary would be coming. If you are saying, okay, the following judges are aligned to A political party and the following judges are aligned to B political party, that would be a very serious occasion if that started to happen at a broader level. It is, and it's something that's concerned this nation from the 1970s onwards when uh, Mohan Kumar Manglam was talking as law minister about having very committed judges who are going to be committed to the government. So I think we've been very conscious about the fact that we need judges who are thoroughly independent and no, are not going to be obliged in any way to governments. Lots of things happen behind this veil of secrecy. So there's no way of putting a finger on it as to who is close to which government and what they're going to serve and why they're going to serve that. How so, do you maximize the independence of the judiciary from the government of the day? There are two or three ways of doing it. The, the, the first and most important thing is to pay them well. The unfortunate thing is you have a judge uh, who is hearing a matter. Many of my senior colleagues here would be making about 50 times what that judge would make by appearing before him once. Now, that is a huge problem with our judiciary. You need to ensure, like in Singapore, for example, they take the average of the top 10 counsel in the country, figure out how much they're making and average that and give that to the chief justice and the other judges. You need to ensure that there's a lot of financial security to them, which doesn't exist. Doesn't exist at the lower levels, doesn't exist all the way up to the Supreme Court. A second thing is, and I think this is very important, the entire registry that Mr. Singh was talking about, which actually controls like uh, it was pointed out, behind a veil of secrecy, what actually happens in the Supreme Court, many of the advocates, uh, a large majority of the advocates of the Supreme Court are deeply disgruntled with how the Supreme Court's registry functions, how things are listed, how things happen overnight, something is moved from one place to another. And the registry always has no clari cl clarity on this or no, or no explanation. What is necessary is the registry is pretty much run by a bunch of lower judicial officers. These are not people who are adept at understanding the complexities of management. We need to have an independent person who is not obliged to the judges, who is completely with a management background, a CEO, for example, of some company with a five-year experience, like you, Vikram, who could come along and be the CEO <laughs> of the Supreme Court. <laughs> That's his new right? job. <laughs> who would then That's not... That's reforming the judiciary, no, I, I guess. I, I'm very <laughs> serious about the idea of having a CEO for the Supreme Court okay. who will be appointed by a proper process, above okay. reproach, etc., 
who could be the man with some stature who could say, look, this is the way we're going to manage this system. Because at the moment, the system is not can perfect. I, yeah, I'm just trying I, to think of the complexities of managing that no, particular no, system. It's a very complex. You, you, you don't, you don't, don't have, okay. I just want to... Uh, even the MOP, uh -huh. yeah, the MOP was actually, what the large perception is that the MOP came in only because the judge who was hearing was not the Chief Justice and he was having differences. So he sent up such a judgment that an MOP has to be decided by unanimous five judges so that the Chief Justice can't make any appointment. I mean, that's how everybody in the... Uh, yeah, but okay, no, 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 sorry, sorry. So I, you I could have decided I mean, what, I, what I don't want to get, in, instead of, so just to leave this, let's look at this at a slightly broader level. I have one question I want all of you to answer to. The crux of this thing boils down to you. How do you prevent the politicization of the judiciary? Now, he, Gopal made a point. Pay them better. Paying them better, especially yeah. the lower judiciary level, means less you're less prone Possibly. to corruption, the potentially. Judiciary, but it doesn't often work. I mean, look at politicians. Some of the yeah, richest yeah. politicians yeah. are still the most corrupt. So that doesn't necessarily <laughs> answer the no, question. No, you don't have... I just wanted to say from... How do you prevent them from being politicized? Now, since Gopal is uh, practicing in the Supreme Court, all the, his main point seems to suggest that corruption is a big problem in the judiciary. So pay them more and they'll stop being corrupt. Isn't that basically what saying you're saying? I'm not saying it's a major problem, but I'm saying where it's a problem, it needs to be Okay, addressed. so whatever, but there is a okay. hidden implication, which is No, no, there isn't. I want to make it very clear. Okay. No, 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 Sorry, I'll tell you. I think them, many people no, on this I, panel... I want to make another point. Yeah. Many people on this panel have drawn these large conclusions about the lower judiciary. I want to defend that. Okay. I want to say the lower, lower judiciary is not as bad as broken Absolutely. as all of you make okay. it out to be. It's actually very, very good. Absolutely. It's doing a I great job. They're handling overwhelming odds. Yes. And I think this idea that the entire lower judiciary is corrupt is ridiculous. Absolutely. No, no, no one has I said that, neither did I. Vikram, as I just far want to as get the higher Vishan. pay is concerned, that is to attract the best talent. Yeah. So because a lot of good lawyers don't want to become yeah. judges because of the paltry money Absolutely. that they have to pay. Yeah. How do they That's pay? Okay. They That's can't even need their now, mobile now, now, you know, phone. I, I, I'm keeping on a return to the politicization question. How do you prevent politicization yeah. of judges? That, that, that is Can it be done at all? Because, by the way, having a political view or having a political influence or saying, I'm a left wing or I'm a right wing or I'm a communist or I'm a BJP supporter or I'm an RS supporter, that could happen from inside. Now, in this country, by and large, we have had a great track record but you can't really point to too many judgments or decisions that have come by. You can say, well, that was politically influenced or so the other. It's actually Justice Krishnayar, for example, one of our greatest judges, was a communist minister in Kerala, brought his socialist leanings into his judgments. And we didn't point fingers at that because we knew the ideology of the man before he was coming in. So they will have ideologies. That's okay. The question is of them being comp compromised with reference to... No, but you were, not, you were not necessarily yeah. have... A judge yeah. making a wrong yeah. judgment because Absolutely. he has an ideological Absolutely. leanings. Yeah, you know, you right. can't say, oh, I'm going to convict no, that no. person even though right. he's innocent because I politically belong yeah. to the other party. Yeah. That's, that's where the real true. problems that's would come. True. Is there politicization taking place in the judiciary? And if so, how can it be countered? You see, all judges are human beings. And they, ha they have their own views. They have their own predilections. They come to the office with those predilections. They have their own personality, which has evolved over the years. So we can't grudge them their predilections. However, that doesn't mean that they are politically aligned. Politically aligned is altogether different. But I think independence of judiciary, if it has to be preserved, it's as important to have judicial accountability. And we need to institutionalize judicial accountability. There is no institutional mechanism to deal with the complaints against judges. Mm. People don't know what has been decided, whether, whether they, their yeah, okay. complaint has been Fair taken enough. into account at all. I mean, preventing politicization. I mean, look, we know that the lawyers, right, are politicized. I mean, most of them are ministers very closely, not most of them, a large number of lawyers, especially the senior most levels, are all very closely aligned with political parties. They are party spokespeople, they are ministers, and all of that sort of a stuff. How do you prevent any of that from filtering through to the judges? You can't possibly have uh, any uh, foolproof way of not letting that happen. And uh, no matter what legal framework you may do, eventually the buck will stop with the judge in question. Now, all the suggestions which were made are relevant and important because pay is important, security is important, tenure is important, longer tenure is still better, which, which will all aid in so far as ensuring independence is concerned. But notwithstanding all that, the eventually what would actually ensure safety of the judiciary and maintain its integrity is the judge himself not compromising with his conscience. And for that, you cannot possibly have a law. Mm, what you can correct. do is you can basically provide facilities so as to ensure that any deviant 
because of anything which is lacking in the system should not become an excuse for the judge to do something which is improper propriety. And here I would sing, we are all talking about judges, we are talking about lower judiciary, we are talking about others, we are not talking about lawyers. I personally think lawyers have a very important role too. Because many times the controversies which are created are created by the lawyers themselves. And so much so that this particular controversy talk about the Prasad medical case. Now, in so far as this is concerned, I personally think much of the blame should also go to the lawyers for filing two cases which are identical before two separate benches because you don't want a particular bench. That was caused the confusion. So, okay. it's, uh, that question is concerned. It's as a collaborative effort. They have to have systemic correction in it. The lawyers have to be involved in it. And the judges eventually should bear the responsibility of ensuring that they do okay. not in any way. Anjali. Politicization. So politicization, I agree with you, Vikram, that judges are finally human beings. They will have their leanings, their political leanings, their ideological leanings. What we so are would interested... Would you also agree with me that till now, by and large, it hasn't really come out and expressed itself it in It hasn't any come out openly well, because there is no, yeah. no way of coming from, out. From what the judges have even written how in the many letter... Judge, yeah, how many judgments can you look at and say it was probably so politically that is motivated? That is that is not that many. Vikram, I think that we can't, we can't say that this hasn't happened. They, like Mr. Tulsi is saying, it might not have come out as openly yeah. as it does in many mm -hmm. other cases, but surely this has been happening. It has already been written in the, in the letter by the four judges where they have said that chief justices have been doing this. So let me just say that our idea as a citizen, mm -hmm. our, in, our uh, goal should be that whoever sits in that place is accountable and finally dispenses justice, which we all see as justice being done. And there I feel that proper systems have to be in place. Why in the Supreme Court are there no video and audio recordings of proceedings, for example? That is the one way by which people can actually see what is happening. That's they right. can understand whether uh, cases are being dealt with fairly or not. Again, that's a, the that's whole a really interesting point. Why again, not have it televised? Absolutely. Now, how else do you infuse accountability? Look, the Supreme Court itself in its judicial pronouncements has said that where there isn't transparency, institutions cannot be credible. They cannot maintain their credibility. In terms of appointments, that's what the Supreme Court has said. What is so different about the Supreme Court itself? Okay. Why should the memorandum of procedures, which Mr. Singh also talked about, I'm sure he might speak about again, so let me just finish this point. Why should the memorandum of procedure, which lays out how our judges are going to be appointed, not be in the public domain? What is so secret about that document? Okay. The let collegium has finalized the MOP. Do any of us know what is there in okay. the MOP? Has because the government responded? What are the comments of the government on the NOP, MOP? There is no information. Okay. Well, okay. as far as I'm concerned, basically the collegium system itself is a huge check on the independence of the judiciary to show that the judiciary is independent. What the government needs to do is to strengthen the collegium system. And how can they do it? They can do it by giving it a permanent secretariat because, you know, you have to look at the problem of the judge from the judge's perspective. They are doing these cases all day long. They have to read briefs at home. When do they get the time to analyze who all are eligible and who all should be considered? That is, a, that is all done in a very ad hoc so manner. So again, should that so be done by an independent party? Not should be a permanent secretariat. Get a secretariat. I'm not, I'm not no, saying. I what I'm saying is there should be... Even has a petition saying there's a lot of nepotism. No, no, I, that Vikram, people let me keep just complete. Their own sons keep getting... Uh, what I'm becoming, saying is you know? that yes. if there is she a permanent secretariat... The I'll just give you an example. You have a permanent secretariat. So mm -hmm. if the High Court, for instance, you can say he should have a salary of so-and-so. He should be having an income as a return of so-and-so. He should have had five, six reported judgments. He should be within this age group. Okay. So that secretariat should be finding out all those names which are in that group and then give it to a two, two, two lawyer committee like they have done in the case of senior designation now. Have those two lawyers also nominated by okay. the collegium itself Let me, so that there is some kind of a broad-based consultation. Now I'll just last for the chief justice to know every lawyer practicing in his court. For instance, there may be some very good lawyer in the criminal yeah. side, but the chief never hears criminal matters. So he never gets to see that lawyer. So you have How to get these appoint? reforms in a collegium system. I, I, let me just turn very quickly to the audience. I'm running out of time. Let me get some views. Yeah, carry on. with you. The main issue is that what is going in our judicial system, as the sudden death of the FBI judge, no appeal by the FBI, as already mentioned by Mr. Ravish Kumar on the NDDB, sir. So the main issue is that, so what about the common person who is the only faith in the judi judiciary only, sir? So what about that, sir? How he will believe in the judiciary for justice, sir? So okay. Please kindly answer, sir, please. Yeah. Uh, the another thing is that uh, well, uh, Mr. Singh has mentioned that uh, the press conference is for uh, something that is to be made less obscure, not for concealing. So the four judges, they are very, very much illuminaries in our uh, judicial system. So why is that they have 
then such a thing that there is concealment of a sort. So but is there sort of something of grave or something? Okay, I, let me let me just get the mic back there to those to those three gentlemen. Yeah. As you can see that, uh, as it, it has been said, that political parties are having influence on the uh, on our uh, judicial system. So does that mean we have? It's the concern. I'm not saying that is the, that is happening. Yeah. So, that like, does that, so that's what everyone is getting concerned yeah, yeah. about. So does that mean that we have to uh, like form some new reforms regarding that, or like we have yeah, to? Yeah, that's exactly what so the yeah. that's exactly what the concern is and what the issue is. All right, gentlemen, there, yeah, in the back corner. Ma'am, something on you said that we need institutional reforms along those lines itself. What institutional uh, reforms can we have in the registry systems to promote uh, transparency? Yeah, particularly? that's what we discussed. Okay, the gentleman here, last call, last comment. In the, le the letter also says that there has been dissents uh, like earlier also between the judges. So should there not be some mechanism or a committee when there is a dissent between the judges? So that could be sorted out there okay. only. All right, fine. I want to just come back to all of you to just get one final take on something completely different. Yes, we've been discussing accountability. Yes, we've been discussing how do you reform it? You know, how do you make sure that there's independence? At the end of the day, though, if you were to look at the judiciary as a whole and the problems with it, would these be the bigger concern or should there be one overall reform that is required? How do we get the correct infrastructure and systems to have speedier justice? So this is important, but that's actually the real problem. Well, there are a large number of issues, not only one. Judges' appointment is one. The infrastructure that is to be given to judges is the other. Only one more thing, when your judge goes, he also yeah. has a right of franchise. Every judge of the Supreme Court must be exercising that right of franchise. He would be voting either for BJP or Congress or whichever Amandi party. Does that mean that because he has voted that way, that itself is a ground for him to decide matters? If you were to be sitting on a seat of a judge, I don't know whether you've ever done that, you do an arbitration in the family, your perspective will change the yeah. moment you sit on that but seat. The fact that you so voted th should not really influence the of way you're passing a judgment because that's what comes in. Yeah, it yeah. shouldn't. And I think that's why everybody is concerned about the independence of the judiciary and the credibility of the judiciary is centrally dependent on that. And I think that there is no shortcut to this. Any kind of sitting together, taking care <coughs> of the pr current problem of a particular okay. case will not help. There'll have to be larger reforms. There'll have to be greater accountability. There'll have to be greater transparency. And I really you want to also bring in here that even the broken system of grievance redress that has been referred to, if somebody has a complaint against the Chief Justice of India, the procedure, the in-house procedure of the Supreme Court is completely silent on where they even go. I okay. think we need to put in so place don't, If you don't want to do a press conference, what's sure the option? All right, very quickly, we are flat out of time. You know, what do you, so is the speeding up of justice the real crux or the maintaining of the independence? Where do you think no, the I bigger think problem both, is? both together have to, speeding up is important because adjudication has to have a conclusion and until there's a conclusion, there's no enforcement of law. At the same time, the system should be credible and the credibility should not be undermined. And if the un because insofar as the judge is concerned, the, he's got neither the power of the purse or the sword. It is only belief in him which makes the judgment enforceable and recognizable. That should not be in any way shaken. Very important. That credibility of the system is crucial, as Aman is saying. Well, I think that uh, it's, it's, uh, there should be a credible inquiry into the matters, including <laughs> Judge Loya. They, they, otherwise, there is going to be a great amount of insecurity amongst judges at all levels. Okay. Sabha, final thoughts. I liked it thoughts. when Mr. Lakey said that the ultimate check is the, is the voice of conscience. I believe that the four senior most judges after the Chief Justice of India they acted from a voice of conscience and they have flagged that, that there is a big problem in the judiciary and it has, it has national political implications for us if we don't recognize what they're saying. All right, last word from you. Um, speedy justice, I think we need more IT solutions required across the board and the training of the judges to use those IT solutions. I think that will help in a big way. I think you have to impose costs for delays which are caused by lawyers and lawyers are largely responsible for this. We can't blame the judges or the clients. And as far as the Supreme Court and its future is concerned, we need every single judge of the Supreme Court today, not four plus one, every single one sitting around a table, having a conversation and figuring out the way forward. All right, figure out the way forward. Use this particular rather unfortunate, you know, fortnight, 10 days that we have seen to actually find the real reforms that are required. Because I began by saying institutions at the end of the day and the checks and balances that they imply 
That's the lifeblood of a democracy. While the institutions stand and continue to be independent and well-functioning, that's when a democracy thrives. When the institutions start to get eroded, or trust or belief or their credibility starts to get eroded, democracy runs into trouble, and which is why it is really important to find an uh, answer and a solution and a path forward that everybody can put their hands on, touch, look at, and say, yes, we have got an answer to it, and that credibility and the trust that we have in our judiciary is, is being maintained and will be maintained for all time to come. You're watching The Big Fight. We'll be back next week. Bye for now.